Welcome to Living in the World International Church. We are here as in doers of God's Word with signs and wonders following. If you want more information about our ministry, visit us at www.litweek.org or email us at info at You will never be the same again. Now it's time to listen to God's Word from Pastor Femi Alaren. Be blessed as you listen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to our midweek service. It's good to be here again bringing the word of the Lord to you. I am glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. This month of December, we have been looking at the subject titled, In His Time. We have been examining the subject of time in relation to success, to proceeding, to advancing, to receiving the blessings of God in our lives. No doubt God has a plan. And his time scale is quite different from ours. So in order for us to be able to acquire or get or possess the blessings that we desire, we must be at the right place at the right time. The scripture tells us clearly about the positioning, which is key to success. Being at the right place at the right time is the subject of tonight's service. We are looking at part three of In His Time. Now, the story of Zacchaeus is one that teaches us a, um, a great lesson about positioning. Zacchaeus can be seen in the books of Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 6. Now, Zacchaeus was a man that had um, limitations. Let me use that word. He was a man of small stature. Although he was very rich, yet he was a man of small stature. The Bible says that he ran ahead of Jesus Christ because he has been wanting to see Jesus Christ. In other words, he took initiative. And then he positioned himself on the sycamore tree so that when Jesus Christ is passing by, he will be able to see him. And when Jesus Christ came to his um, area or where he was positioning himself, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down. Today, I must stay in your house and have dinner for salvation has come into your home. That story is of great, great um, importance to us as we study the subject of right place, right time today in our service. So, it's important that each and every one of us begin to look at our position in regards to where we are trying to get to or where we are trying to go. Many of us will desire certain things from the Lord this year. And we have been praying, we have been fasting, we have been seeking God's face for many things. But we are yet to position ourselves in the right place. So God is unable to reach us and God is unable to answer our prayers because of our position. And I believe today's sermon will be of great benefit in opening our eyes so that we can get ourselves into the right place to secure that which we desire in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? My Father and my God, I want to thank you very, very much for this year. Thank you for thus far you have helped us from January to date. Thank you for how you have protected us. Thank you for how you have provided for us. Thank you for how you have secured our destiny. Thank you, Lord, that we are still alive and well in the land of the living. Thank you, Lord, for the good things that you still have in stock for us this year, 2014. We give you all the glory. Lord God of heaven, we are sitting at your feet to learn your word. Please open our eyes of understanding. Reveal to us the mystery of right place and right time. That each and every one of us shall be able to position ourselves for the desired miracle. To the glory and praise of your holy name. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your mighty name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Many a times we see some people and we call them, they are lucky. We call them lucky people. It seems that they seem to get things done or have people favor them or they seem to just have the word at their fingertip. It seems they know what to do and get to get their desired uh, miracle or whatever they want. But let me say this, that luck is a matter of being at the right place at the right time. A man who is lucky can be defined as a man who is at the right place at the right time and is now a recipient of the blessing that is due. There are many people who have blessing um, waiting for them, but they have failed to turn up or failed to show up at the place where the blessing is being distributed. You see, God is not unfair. God follows principles. And I've said in the past that the principle of getting into the kingdom of God is different from the principle of succeeding on earth. 
The Bible clearly tells us in the books of John chapter 3, if you read from verse 3, he said, except a man be born again, he would not see the kingdom of God. That is the principle of seeing the kingdom of God. Now, he says, go to the hand, learn his ways, and you shall be wise. That's his principle of going to school, understanding the principles of the world, and then be able to apply it to be able to succeed. So it's important that each and every one of us understand the principles that govern certain aspects of our lives. Many of us desire or will prefer to go on the mountain to pray. And prayer is very, very important. Each and every one of us is very important that we need to pray. But others who seem to pray less are getting more done. Why? Why? It seems like they are at the right place at the right time where the blessing is being distributed. Now, the Bible speaking in the books of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. I'm reading the living, um, New Living Translation now. The Bible says there, it says, I observe something else under the heaven. The fastest runner doesn't always win the race. The strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry and the skillful are not necessarily wealthy. And those who are educated doesn't, don't always lead success, successful lives. It is decided by chance, by being at the right place at the right time. By being at the right place at the right time. So where are you positioned right now? Marketing experts will tell us that positioning and location of the product will determine how successful the brand will be, how successful the product will be, how competitive their market, um, they can succeed in the market. So each and every one of us must learn to position ourselves at the right place, at the right time. Location will determine your possession. It is said that 99% of success is due to being at the right place, at the right time. So what are you still doing there? Talent alone is not enough to make us succeed in life, as we have read in the scripture. So we need to be at the right place, at the right time. Intelligence is not enough. That's why sometimes you will see people who are supposed, you, you think you are supposed to be smarter than, you know more than, you um, have greater insight and depth than, but yet they seem to be going advanced more than you are, or advancing more than you are. So being at the right place at the right time is so crucial to success. Yes, God has his own time scale. Yes, God has his own timeline. Yes, you must prepare yourself to be in the right place at the right time. Now, why do we need positioning in our lives? Let me say the first one is that your position will determine your connectivity. Now, I've said that God is everywhere, but God does not live everywhere. He sees all things. He knows all things. But he does not dwell in every, every place. Now, your connectivity to heaven will determine uh, what is sent back to you. If your radio frequency to heaven, radio frequency to heaven is bad. Many of us that have cell phones, sometimes we don't get reception um, in certain places. Because the connectivity to the um, communication tower is bad. And once we begin to speak to somebody on the, other, on the other line, we keep telling them to repeat themselves. I can't hear you. Eventually, the line will cut off. Why? Because connectivity is bad. So each and every one of us must position ourselves at the right place, at the right time, so that the connectivity to heaven will be right. And therefore, once our prayers can be heard, before the throne of God, we can be sure that he will answer. Because the Bible says in the books of Daniel chapter 10, if you read from verse 12, before the angel arrived, he said, from the first day that you have prayed, Daniel, and you have set your heart to pray, he said, the answer has been sent. So we can be rest assured that God, who hears prayer, will answer us once he has heard it. Number two, your positioning can affect your victory. Uh, you remember the story carefully of, of um, so Moses and um, Joshua when they were fighting the Amalekites in the books of Exodus 17. You see, Moses had to go on top of the mountain to pray and secure their victory. 
because the wrong positioning would definitely lead to their defeat. And as long as Moses was lifting up his hand towards the heaven and praying on the behalf of the Israelites, they kept winning the battles. As long as his hand was up, they were winning. But once his hand came down, they lost the battle. In other words, your position can affect your victory. Where are you positioned? Are you at a place where you're vulnerable to the attack of the enemy? You see, God is not a wicked father. He won't hear your cry and then uh, ignore it. The prodigal, uh, prodigal son was away from his father's house, away from a secure position. Hence the reason why he was going hungry. He was starving and he was eating with pigs. But once he res um, returned back to a um, secure position, everything that he has lost was restored. So where are you positioned? That will determine the victory that you are enjoying. Number three, your positioning can determine the kind of people that you meet. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that sitteth not in the council of the ungodly. So if you sit in the council of the ungodly, then you can be sure that you will meet ungodly people. And you will talk with ungodly people. And you will be influenced with ungodly people. And you can be defrauded by ungodly people. So, it's important that where you are sitting or who you are gathering with will determine what you do. Bible says this. It says, don't be deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. There are some people, when they call me, I look at the phone and I have to pray myself to picking up their phone call. Why? Because by the time they tell you their news, believe me, they will drain you of faith. So such people, I can't be around them, for they will rob me of faith. And without faith, the Bible says, it's impossible to please God. And I want to please him because I want to get my prayers answered. Am I making sense to you? Positioning is so key to how we, 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 we succeed or where we succeed. It's important that each and every one of us begin to align ourselves in the right place at the right time. Now, number four. Your position will determine how strong you are. Now, when I'm talking about position, how strong you are, I'm talking about who are you aligning yourself with. Some stronger uh, nations of the world have alliance with um, lesser nations of the world in terms of military might I'm talking about now. Now, for example, um, there are some countries like Israel. You can't touch Israel and not expect America to respond. Once you lay your hand upon Israel, America will respond because they are in alliance together. Likewise, yourself. Who are you positioned or who are you aligned with? Are you aligned with the men of the world? Or are you aligned with the almighty God? Whenever you check that, you can begin to determine where your position is. Number five. Your position can determine the overall success of the team. Remember, one shall chase a thousand, two shall ch chase ten thousand. What does that mean? For those who are playing team sports, you can uh, testify to this that um, every man on the game or in the game must play his position correctly. Now, in a football uh, match or soccer match, you have the striker, you have the midfielders. You have the defenders. You have the goalkeeper. Now, the goalkeeper cannot go and play the position of a striker and leave the goal empty. He's going to leave the house empty to goals being scored. The defender cannot go forward and go and become a striker. And the striker cannot go backwards and become a defender. Although, modern football, you say you have to play two ways, um, two ways um, match. In other words, you play striking and you defend as well. So, it's important that each and every one of us understand that our positioning can also influence the success of others. It's important that you don't waste energy in the wrong direction. Because many people are frustrated because they are wrongly positioned. Peter has fished all night and he had nothing to show for it because his positioning was wrong. But once, he's aligned, once he aligned himself with the master, Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 8, suddenly he began to, fit, um, to catch more than enough and later became fishers of men. 
every one of us must position ourselves in the right place at the right time to enjoy everything the Lord has prepared for us. Remember, he has prepared the table in the front of your enemies and they can do nothing. But once you move out of the secure location or secure place or um, position, then you can be rest assured that God will not be, be unable to help you. Now, how do we do this thing? How do we achieve being at the right place at the right time? This is very, very important. As I begin to close the sermon. Now, go where God tells you. Go where God tells you. Now, this is so prevalent in the life of Elijah, Elijah, Elijah the prophet. If you study carefully the story of Elijah the prophet in the books of First Kings chapter 17, there was famine in the land and the Lord told him to go to the wilderness. Now, contrary to every economical principle, he's supposed to be in the city because that's the most likely place he will get food. But yet God sent him into the wilderness and then he gave him a brook of water and he sent raven to bring food for him. Now, that is divine provision. Because he's at the right place at the right time. But as soon as the brook dried up, he told him, go back into the city, into the house of a weasel, widow, which I have uh, prepared for you. And then you'll be fed continuously from there. It's important that we obey the instruction of God per time. Many of us are waiting for new instructions from God, but the one that he has given us previously, we are yet to obey it. Where he has sent you, he has made provision for you. So go where God has told you to go. Number two, act promptly. Do not delay. Act promptly. Do not delay. You see, the man at the pool of Bethsaida in the books of John chapter 5, if you read from verse 5 to 11, has been at the pool for 38 years. He has never acted promptly in his life. He has taken things easy. He actually had an excuse that nobody is there to help him, help him to get into the um, pool. But guess what? There are multitude there who had nobody to help them, but yet they were getting healed. So, act promptly and don't make excuses because that is the only way you can be able to acquire that which God has said for you to do. Number three, do not preempt God. Many of us have the habit of doing that. I must say I've, be, I've done that before. In other words, you are choosing how God is going to do it. If you check carefully the stories of Jesus and the miracles of Jesus Christ, he did the same miracle but using different method. Sometimes he will send them to the pool to go and wash their face. Sometimes he will spit on the floor, wipe their face. Sometimes he will just send the word. He can do as he feels. He is the Almighty. That's why he's sovereign by himself. He doesn't need us. Number four, do what he has told you to do. Let me share a testimony here. There was a testimony of a man that was told to go and wait in a hotel lobby. Hotel lobby of all places in the world. The man has been praying for a new job, asking God for a miracle job. He has been doing all he can before the Almighty. He said one morning he was doing his devotion when the Lord spoke to him. He said, go and wait in a hotel lobby. So he knew the hotel and he sat down at their lobby. While he was waiting, while he was waiting, he waited first hour, second hour, third hour. He read the newspaper. He had a soft drink. He sat down. He was still waiting. After so many hours, a man walked in unhappy. A Chinese man or somebody from one of those um, eastern countries in the far east. He sat down. And while he was sitting down, the Lord said, go and speak to him. So he went to speak to him and say, hello, how are you? How can I help you? And then he said, um, in the course of their conversation, the man told him that he came to Nigeria to do some business. And he, he, was, he has been disappointed by those he expected to have um, come up with his money or whatever they were supposed to do. And so he's unhappy. Now he has a container in a port or his goods in the port and he's yet to be um, offloaded and because he has no market, he doesn't know what to do. And the man said, I can do it. 
And because he said, I can do it, the man looked at him. He said, you look like an honest man. He said, I will give you the container and the documents to clear it. And once you are finished clearing it, send the money back to me. And I then can begin to send you more goods. And that is how he went from a person looking for a job to becoming a man of employer. Or so employer of labors, rather. In other words, he was at the right place at the right time. Do what he tells you to do. When Jesus told them um, to fill the pots, of, um, pots with water, they thought he was crazy, but they did what he told them to do. When the prophet Elisha told Naaman, go and take your bath seven times in the Jordan River, he did what he told him to do. It sounds foolish, but yet we must do it. Number five, which I believe is the most important, is that we keep celebrating God. Many of us are very full and yet we sound like we need more blessing. But because we are murmuring and complain, that is um, repelling God from us. Thank him as if you're expressing the blessings now. You see, Paul and Silas were in the prison, but yet they were praising God. Paul and Silas began to sing praises so loudly, the Bible recalls that the prisoners heard them. What is the word hearing from your mouth? Are they hearing the same old sad stories? Or are they hearing that your God is good and is able to save? Because what they hear from your mouth will determine how they are attracted to you. I don't like going to places where there's a lot of bad news. I really don't because I don't want my soul or my spirit to be corrupted. So learn to celebrate the God of heaven. Number six, do not be passive. You can't be passive serving God. You must make sure that you are active proactive in your serving of God. You might be waiting on God and actually God is actually waiting on you to make a move. Remember, when they carried the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders, the Jordan River did not stop until they took a step. So take a step today and see what the Lord can do. As I begin to close, let me share a few benefits with us. How, why we need to be in the right place at the right time. See, for you to be able to be in the right place at the right time means that you can negotiate from a position of strength. Moses was on the mountain in Exodus 17. If you read from verse 9 to 13, he was negotiating the victories of the children of Israel. When you are at the right place at the right time, you won't have to compromise because you have the truth of the word of God in you. It's important that each and every one of us must do this. If you want to secure victory for yourself, for others, like I used the example earlier, be in the right place at the right time. You know, I've heard testimonies of people. Maybe I should share one more with us because of our time maybe, and maybe conscious. There was a man who was going to work. Uh, this happened actually in West Africa, Nigeria. He was on his way to work and suddenly he heard a voice to go back home to get something or he... And he returned back home to go and receive, um, to take whatever he has forgotten. Before he could say anything else, there was a bomb blast on the road which he was traveling on and the place where he walks at. If he had refused to listen to the voice who, who told him to go back home, he would have been destroyed. Be at the right place at the right time would not only secure you victory, can also preserve your life. Um, number five, or number three, rather. When you are in the right place at the right time, naturally you will be favored. So that's why I pity those who are perpetual latecomers to church. There was a story of a man that I heard. He lived across the church, and yet he comes late to the church. He said one morning while he was taking his bath, from his window, he saw angels standing in front of the church, giving the people who came early blessings. So he ran out of the church, out of the bathroom naked, towards the church. And people looked at him as if he was mad. He said, no, 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 I'm not mad. Allow me to speak. Allow me to speak. He said, what's the problem? He said, I can see the angels standing outside the door, giving us blessings. So I came to collect my own. Ladies and gentlemen, your positioning will determine your victory. Your positioning will determine what you secure before the end of the year. 
It's important that each and every one of us begin to change our positioning relative to what God is about to do. I believe God still has blessings for this year. And I believe that each and every one of us have a part in that. And I pray that none of us will elude, none of the blessings will elude any of us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. So get yourself in the right position so that you can secure what God has in stock for you. It is not time to play around and joke around. It is time to be serious with the Almighty God. If you are full, yes, and you have enough, yes, there's no need to worry about getting more. And there's no problem. But for those of us that still have needs and we still have prayers that we want to pray and people we want to see saved, then we need to get ourselves in the right place at the right time. And I believe as you begin to do so, God himself will begin to visit you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Father, we give you glory and honor. We bless your holy name. We thank you for your word as comfort with life and power this day. We exalt you because you are faithful. I pray, Father, that you reveal to us wherever we have gone wrong in our positioning so that we can be in the right place at the right time to secure the blessing that you have for us this year to the glory and praise of your holy name. We give you all the glory, almighty God. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God.